Okay, so guys, welcome once again. My name is Daniel J from Optimum Senior High School. And here we are coming to treat one of the major topics that students face problem in here in Ghana. And that is about compounds, which is a subtopic and a matter. So I'll give a brief introduction about matter. Now we know that in the first place, matter is anything that has weight and can occupy space. Right? So anything we see, we feel, it has space and can occupy space, then it means that that thing is matter. It is quite unfortunate that so many students don't know that air is matter, but an experiment has determined that air occupies space, and so it is matter. Now, what are the building blocks of matter? Now, everything that we see in this life is made up of something. For example, living organisms, they are made up of cells, right? So, compounds, macromolecules, they are also made up of its monomers, the small, small ones. So, what is what are the building blocks of matter? So matter, we know that it is made up of atoms, molecules, and the last one is iron. Now it would be important for you to know that all of these things, the molecules, the ions, they all have their reference points to be the atom. And so we saw that we say that atom is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. That is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. Now, when we come to a molecule, there are a group of atoms that are chemically combined and can exist on their own. So, for example, you find out that nitrogen will exist in its gaseous state, and that will be N2 instead of the elemental N. And that we know nitrogen will exist in a gas state the same way hydrogen will also exist in a gaseous state all right so we, we can see from here that two hydrogen atoms have come together to give us the H2 and because they are stable on their own it means that they are molecules okay so these are called diatomic molecules we also have triatomic molecule which an example a major example is the ozone that is O3 Okay, so let's move to the third one, the third building block of matter, and that is ion. So we ask the question, what is an ion? Now, an ion is basically an atom that is charged. What this means is that it has either lost or gained an electron. Okay, we know that the structure of an atom, um, for the structure that we know, it is spherical like this with a central nucleus and in the nucleus we know that we have neutrons and protons in the nucleus right and the nucleus contains the mass of the atom the protons are positively charged and the neutrons have no charge now on shelves around the nucleus are electrons which are in constant motion they are not fixed and they move around now when an atom loses or gain any of the electrons it becomes a charged atom all right, so we say an ion is basically a charged atom. Just like we also said that molecules are a group of atoms that can exist on their own, which are chemically combined and can exist on their own. So now let's move on to the states of matter. Remember, the first one that we talked about are the building blocks. Don't be confused. So those are the building blocks. Of matter right and we talked about three things we talked about the ion atoms molecules and ions okay now we are moving on to the states of matter state means that is it solid is it liquid is it gas and so matter can exist in all these states there's a third state which is plasma but it's not something that is in books. For example, flames, lightning. There are examples of the plasma, which is the fourth state, but that is not what we are looking at at our level right now. So let's move on to the states. States of matter. So for now, matter can exist in three states. And those states are the solid, liquid, and gas solid 
liquid and gas yes so i'm saying that there's also a fourth state which is plasma but that's not our level right now so you can know but the example of the plasma states is the flames the fire flames and lightning thunder lightning and other things okay so let's talk something let's say something small about these states of matter so we talk about the solid states what classifies some things to be a solid what properties would you see in something to call it a solid now we can first of all talk about the arrangement of the particles in the solid okay so in, in solids we can see that the particles are very closely packed so for example drawing a diagram i can show it this way Now, from the diagram on the board, you can see that the particles in a solid, they are closely packed such that there's no space around them to move. And this is one of the reasons why solid particles does not move, instead they vibrate. Because you can see some small spaces in here. And so when you are heating a solid, for example a metal, we know that when you heat a metal to a higher temperature, it, the bonds break down and then they melt and become liquid. Now what happens is that when you are heating it, the molecules and it gains higher kinetic energy and they begin to vibrate about their point all right and so when they vibrate about their points the bonds holding them gets broken and now they are able to move freely and turn into liquid okay now when we want to look at the same arrangement of the particles in a liquid this one will have some spaces around them which will tell you that they are not that closely packed Now, what insight does this arrangement also gives us about the particles, the arrangement of particles in liquid? Now, because of the spaces you see in between the molecules here, it means that liquid will be able to move over each other. The, the molecules in the liquid, the particles in the liquid, will be able to move over each other. And this is why water floats or liquid floats. This is the reason why when you pour liquid on something or liquids are able to float and go and flow and go because there is spaces in between the particles or molecules and so the, the molecules in there or the particles are able to move past each other now in the same way we can draw we can draw the structure okay the arrangement of particles in a gas and here you see that there is wider space between them there's wider space between them and what inside does this arrangement also tells us about gases it means that gases they're able to move freely because of this larger spaces they have in between them okay now this this arrangement will also lead us to something we call the compression ability now what is this compression ability looking at the arrangement of the particles in solid liquid and gases which of them do you think can be compressed when we say something is compressed it means that it is it is pressed down or like plains packed into a small space so looking at this arrangements in the solids this arrangement in the liquids and this arrangement in the gas which of them do you think that will be more easily to compress now solids here cannot be compressed at all why because there's no space you can see that there's no space there's no space in between the particles and so it cannot be compressed at all okay now when we move here to the liquid it, we can see some spaces a little spaces in between okay so this means that they can be compressed a little but not easily like you can't compress it that easy but then liquids can be compressed a little you can you can pack so many like you can press down liquids in a container and it is not easy but then looking at the spaces here it means that it can be compressed but not that easy now let's come to gases there are wider spaces between the particles, the molecules, and this means that gases can be easily compressed, okay? And so when you go to uh, organizing shops or fitting shops, we find out that they have a compressor where they've compressed so much oxygen or gases, or when we go to our filling stations where we fill LPG gases, we realize that they've compressed so much gas into a tank and they are able to fill our cylinders or our car tires. And so we know that gases, are easily compressed okay now what else can we 
talk about the properties of solids, liquid, and gas. Okay. Now there is something I would also want you to know about forms, forms or classifications of matter. So this is the first one, building blocks of matter. The second one, states of matter. And then the third one I want you to know is the forms or classification of matter. Now what are the forms or classifications of matter? Matter can be classified as an element. It can also be a compound. Or they can be mixtures. We can have matter in the form of an element. We can have matter in the form of a compound. And we can have matter in the form of mixtures. And so we will take this one by one and we, we will talk about them. But remember that our main aim for today is about compounds. Okay. So what is an element in the first place? Now an element, let me clear the one. element we say that it is a pure substance that is made up of the same kinds of atoms an element we say that it's a pure substance that is made up of the same kinds of atoms. Now, one thing you should know about the definition is that these elements cannot be broken down by any known chemical or physical means. Okay? So we can add this to the definition. So an element is a pure substance that is made up of the same kinds of atoms and cannot be broken down by any known physical or chemical means okay so this is an element so we can ask of some examples we can talk about some examples of elements okay so there are so many elements okay there are so many elements about 118 i don't know if it's still going up and so we can talk of hydrogen Helium, lithium, beryllium, calcium, potassium, magnesium, they are all examples of elements. And so what you should know about these is that they are made up of the same kind of atoms, right? And they cannot be broken down by any known chemical or physical way. Okay. That's great. So about the elements we can talk about symbols chemical symbols representing these elements okay and so for example hydrogen will be represented by h okay then helium will be represented by he and then calcium will be represented by ca okay so these are symbols that we use to represent the element now the second one is compounds So, what is a compound? A compound, we say, is a chemical combination of two or more elements. Okay, a compound is a chemical combination of two or more elements. Remember, we are saying chemical combination of two or more elements. Okay, because one element cannot stand on its own. When when the element is standing on its own, then it's an element, all right? And it's made up of the same kind of atom. But here, we are forming something. We are bringing two things together to form one thing. So it will be the chemical combination because you can't add the element physically. I, I don't, I, you, you can't 
add them physically. I don't know how you'll be able to see that, okay, this is oxygen around me. I'm catching oxygen and then mixing it with hydrogen or something. Okay, so it should be a chemical form. It should be a chemical combination of these elements. Okay, so that's what we've talked about. Examples of compound, okay, you can have H2O to be an example, one of the commonest compounds on earth is water. Okay, so we can have water to be an example. We can have salt, NaCl to be example. Different types of salt, magnesium chloride, calcium chloride, they are all compounds. Okay, we can have um, glucose, they are all compounds, chemical compounds. Okay, let's move to the third form, which is a mixture. Now, mixture is the physical combination of two or more substances. Mixture is the physical combination of two or more substances. Okay, so here, the difference between a compound and a mixture is that a mixture is a physical combination. That one you know, you can see and you can feel. You are holding this and you are adding it to this, okay? So a physical combination of two or more substances. Remember, they are not elements. Here, they are substances, okay? So when you are adding them together, when you are bringing them together, it means that you are forming a mixture, okay? So we can differentiate we can have so many things to differentiate between the compounds and the mixtures here from the definition we can have two differences because the first one we said it's a chemical combination right the first one we said it's a chemical combination and so you can use that one as a difference as a difference between the mixture and the compound and please when solving for differences when you are asked about differences please and please in Ghana here please draw a table so your work will be simple because most of the time what we see students doing is that they try to write sentence and make sure it's so so and so whilst and to the transition in between there is sometimes a problem and they are not able to communicate well so please draw a table so we can have a compound here and then a mixture here and so from the definition we know that a compound is a chemical combination but it makes sure it's a physical combination, right? Also, from the definition of the compound, we realize that it involves two or more elements. But in the mixtures, we realize that it involves two or more substances. And so right from the definition, we've been, uh, we've been able to get two differences right from the definition now you can go on to say that in compound formation because it's a chemical combination it means you require heat you require heat to blend one element with the other okay so here we can say that the compounds the formation of these compounds usually involves heat it's either heat is taken in or heat is given out okay that is the formation of the compound but in the formation of mixtures which is a physical combination no heat is required. Another point is that in compounds, a new substance is formed. So, for example, you bring together. Let me blend this part. So, for example, you, you bring together sodium, sodium plus, which is a metal, sodium ion, which is a metal, and then chlorine, chlorine ion, which is also a gas. When you bring these two things together, you form a compound called sodium chloride, NaCl. Remember, this is a metal, this is an ion, this is also an ion, this is a metal, this is a gas. But then they come together to form sodium chloride, which has different chemical properties all together from that of sodium and chlorine. Okay, so here, something you see is that a new substance is formed. But let's say you have 
um, in Ghana here, we usually eat gari a lot, so I can use gari as an example. Let's say you have your gari and, or let me use glass, sugar. You physically combine them, you pour gari in a container, you add sugar to it, okay? When you form this, it is a mixture. Why is it a mixture? Because no new substance is formed. It's still your gari and sugar. And because no new substance is formed, you can still separate them. You can get the individual constituent back. Okay? By using a physical means. Here in the compounds, you can only use chemical means to get your individual um, constituent back or to separate them. But in the mixtures, you can use a physical means to separate the mixtures. So for example, filtration. So let's say you have your gari and sugar. You've mixed this together, you've formed a mixture and you want to separate it. What you have to do is to add water to your mixture. Then you stir it up so that the sugar in there will dissolve. Now after you had your mixture, you only pour it on a filter paper to, to give you a filtrate, which is the sugar solution, and your residue, which is the gari, so you can then evaporate it to get your sugar or you can do whatever with it. So you realize that we've been able to separate this mixture physically without using any chemical means or something. Okay, so that is one um, difference, some of the differences between compounds and mixtures. Now let's move on to the main topic of the day, which are compounds. 